Welcome back to another tech tutorial video. This tutorial video will focus on using iSCSI technologies to offer uh, disks to your physical machines that uh, I have only one disk and you haven't got any resources at the moment to add a physical disk to it. So here we are on the physical machine. I already peed to it. I have a remote connected to it. So we see one disk. Well, I'll make it full screen here. So I have one disk. So what we want to do is we want to open up our disk manager. And just to prove, we have one disk. So we only have one disk available. What we want to do is we want to give this a second disk. Now, a good scenario of this is here's my physical machine. I'm trying to give it a second disk. I don't have access to getting a physical second disk at the moment because of the current times with the current pandemic running. So you want to add a second disk to this machine, but perhaps maybe your supplier can't get you a disk, it's out of stock, there's a shortage, whichever the issue may be. You want to expand this. And of course, the expansion still has to happen. It doesn't matter whether you have stock or not, uh, business has to carry on. So in order to add another disk to this machine, we would have to use a technology called iSCSI. Now that gives you network drives, almost like a NAS kind of thing, from any type of source. So in this case, we're going to utilize a virtual server that can utilize a second disk, which will then present network storage to these machines to make it look like they're local. So this is our physical machine. We're going to just minimize that. Take this out of the way. So I'll minimize it down here. So this is the icon here. So we're now on our file server, right? So we have our file server here, sitting here. What we want to do is we want to use a disk. So in this case here, let's make sure the disk is done. Let's get rid of this, test stuff. So if you didn't have a disk, let's say we wanted to add one. So for now, let's take this back. So let's get rid of that 200 gigabyte disk. And fresh, and it's gone. So now we want to add 200 gigabyte disk so we can share some iSCSI storage. So let's go to settings. We will add a 200 gigabyte disk. Single file, next. Okay. So now we have 200 gigabyte disk being added to this machine. Rescan. We want to take this 200 gigabyte disk, initialize it, and we want to format it, give it a drive letter, right? And let's call it, let's just call it iSCSI. So now you have the disk. Minimize it down. Right, so we have this disk. Now, how do we get that disk to this physical machine? Well, now we're going to use technologies I mentioned a second ago. So we're going to minimize that. Let's go back to the machine we want to share this disk from. So we're not going to share this whole disk. We're going to share disks. So I'll show you. So this works with physical and virtual as well. So we'll show you physical first. So first thing we have to do, we have a disk. Now we need to go back to the dashboard in the server manager. We need to add a role. Under file storage services. And you want to click file server. And you want to click iSCSI target server and click next. So back it up for a second. So file server and iSCSI target server. Next, next, install. Now, unless there's another process that happened previously, you shouldn't get any reboot notification. Okay. Installing. And should be done any second now. Okay, good. So there we go. It's now there. Now under file, you will see iSCSI. So I'll go back here. So in the server manager, file storage, let's go to iSCSI 
and let's use the wizard now. So click on the iSCSI virtual, create an iSCSI virtual disk. So now it's using this server. We want to use this drive. That's the, the 200 gigabyte drive we created. Next. Now we want to create a name. So let's say this is for app one. Let's just call it app one. Now it creates a virtual hard drive on that volume. Next. Now we want to give it, let's say 50 gigabyte. And we want to do dynamic. The reason why is because it creates a 50 gigabyte file with zero bytes in it. So this way, as you use it, it will grow. So that's, it's, if you've heard the term before, it's thin storage. Next. And now we want to create a brand new iSCSI target. So we want to con connect to this app drive somehow. So application, let's name it that. And now we want to put in here where we want to share it. So we want to share it to that physical machine. So that physical machine is called FS2. Now, it found them here. If it doesn't find them in here because it just saw them, you want to go into the Active Directory, FS2, check, click OK. The DNS will go out and find it, and you want to click OK. That's all you have to type. So now it found the target or the machine that's going to connect to this target. So you click Next. We'll create a, an encrypted one shortly, but the first initial iSCSI, let's not use any CHAP or reverse CHAP. This is basically a protocol to authenticate the connection between the machines. So this is kind of preventing me from having a third machine or you popping your, someone else pops a machine on and says, hey, I'm going to connect to that drive. Uh, they can't connect to it because they'll have to have a password. So in this case here, we're just presenting to one machine. So we'll leave it as next and create. So now what it's going to do is on this E drive, it's creating that app one volume virtual hard drive. Now see how this is 4K? It's got a 50 gigabyte size cap capacity, the capacity that we can use on it, but it only used thin, so it's not creating any file storage usage yet. So we click OK, and there's our application. Now let's go over to that physical machine again. Go back there. So now we still see one disk. What we need to do is Windows has a built-in tool called iSCSI Initiator. Now I'm going to right-click on this and pin it to the taskbar and go over here where you just run it from the taskbar. And so in Server Manager, you can just go to Tools and go down and you'll see it right here, iSCSI Initiator. So if you need to do it from Server Manager, you can. So the first thing you want to do is refresh to see if it finds anything coming to the machine. So now it did, it found. So if it doesn't find it, then you would type the IP address or the name of the server. It would go out and check to see if there's anything being advertised. So this is being advertised to this machine. Now we wanna click connect. That's the name, and now we're connected. So now when we click okay, we now have a connection to the disk. Now we want to rescan because we just plugged in a disk to the machine. So. Technically, that's what we, we plug the disk in the machine. So now the, the server sees there's a disk connected using iSCSI, the virtual hard drive. So we can now bring it online, initialize, EPT, and new volume. So now we were able to offer a, another disk to the machine, physical, apparently, I'm putting quotes in the air here, that to this machine, it thinks I have a physical disk connected to my machine. So this physical machine here now has a virtual drive connected to it over the network. And Windows knows it's nice because you drive. So, the only caveat here is if the network goes down, this drive could be dropped. Obviously, it would be because it's network controlled. So if we're going to minimize this now and go back here and notice that this drive is connected. Click refresh here. That says not connected. Refresh. 
right? This is not connected. We know we're connected because we've seen it. So the good thing is now we know it's there, right? We can go up here, refresh, and now it's connected. So you, you know it's connected. App one, it's connected there. And there's the app one drive. Now let's do this again. Let's do it with another machine. So let's say our DC, right? <clears throat> so let's log in our DC. Same thing, we have no disk. So now we're going to share it to a virtual machine. It's no different. So we're going to go up to the top of the menu, task, new iSCSI, same drive, and this one here, let's call it profile because we want to put a profile folder or something. Going to create a profiles VHD. This time, let's say 40. And this time, let's do fixed so you can see the difference. Next, we a new SCSI target because we want to create different targets. Unless you want to create multiple disks going out to this application server, uh, I wouldn't do that. I would keep them separate if you could, unless you have multiple disks going to the same servers. You could just do that target and then offer many disks. Um, I've done that with um, clustering. So in this case here, we're going to call a profile. Okay. And now it's going to want to know what machine. So in this case here, we could choose that. Click OK. If it's not there, type in DC1, just like this. DC1, let's go into Resolve. Next. So now DC1. Next. Now in this case here, let's enable chat. So let's call it Profile. And the password is password 2021. Okay, so we're making it chap encrypted, right? Authenticate. I always say encrypted authenticate, sorry. Um, so create. So now we've created a disk with chap encryption or authentication, sorry. And encryption on my mind tonight. So there we go. We have the disk, it's not connected yet. So let's go over to the domain controller now. And same thing, let's go to iSCSI controller, go refresh. Or the ice because the initiator, initialize, initiator, say that five times fast. So we have a disk. We want to click connect. Now we need to go to advanced. And then we need to go down to chap login. And we need to type in that name, profile. Now, was it profiles or profile? Let's try that. Okay. So we made a create a, an account and password. It's now connected. So now we know the password of, of the chat connection. Let's go to server manager and let's prepare this disk to be used with this machine. Now, before we do that, let's go back to file server one. And remember how I created it thick? Well, there you go. It automatically creates that size disk and how much space it is. This one will grow to that space. This is already the space. Now, the only problem here is you can never tell how much data is on there unless you go to the other machine. So let's go to the other machine. Let's do a scan. This first. Do a scan. And we should see the 40 gigabyte disk we presented. Let's bring it online. Right? It's already online. Initialize. Format it. and call it profiles. And now we have a disk named profile. And it's online. It has, right, oh, on. We remote connected to this machine. So remote connected to the physical machine. And there you go. So they all have drives presented through iSCSI. So we did it into a virtual machine. We did it with a physical machine. Now we could 
if we wanted to share disks between machines, that would be something like a cluster. So if you want to fail it over. So if I wanted uh, these two machines to become a cluster, I can create Windows clustering. Previous video I did. Um, I can also present many disks. So the disks I could present are from iSCSI. So it presents them as, hey, it has a physical disk. They're both sharing it between each machine. So when one fails over, it drops one to the next and drops the other to the other. So we have an active passive or a passive, uh, yeah, an active active or active passive connection to the disks. So then these disks we presented will be shared between each other. So in this case here, I only shared it to one to the other. And I showed you chap. You could also do reverse chap as well. So that's pretty much it, what you need to do for iSCSI. It's very simple to set up. You can go as complex as you want. As you see, there's not connected. Let's refresh and it's connected. So we know the chat password worked because it connected. If it didn't have it, you wouldn't be able to connect to it. So that's pretty much it. That's all there is to setting up iSCSI volumes. I'm sharing from here. The machine out here now has a disk. I've resolved the problem without having to go into the office and putting a physical disk into this machine or having to you know, I can wait till a physical machine arrive, a physical disk arrives, then go to the machine and plug it in and then move the data to it and then get rid of the temp drive. So this is a way around certain ways of adding technology to servers without having to physically connect drives. So there you have it. Uh, please like, subscribe if you want. Um, watch out for some future videos. I'm trying to get some ideas what to present here. Um, I'm thinking about doing certificate services and web serving. Um, perhaps maybe Tomcat and Apache in the future as well, uh, just to try to add more content to my channel. Uh, it just seems to be, I, I, run, I run out of time to add more content, but I'm trying to add as much as I can uh, for the people who do like this type of video. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next video.